morning, everyone here in the sanctuary, and good morning to everyone listening to us on WGTH Radio. We'll start with the announcements. Uh, Monday, we'll have, we will have Bible study at 1 p.m. Wednesday, and there is a change to this, choir practice is at 6 and Bible study follows at 7, and that's for this week only. You can see the duties for everyone for Sunday, August the 14th. And looking ahead, our church board meeting will be next Sunday, so all uh, elders, deacons, and chairpersons need to attend, please. Uh, Bible study scripture for the 8th and the 10th this week will be Luke chapter 11, verses 14 to 36. And as always, the Good Samaritan Food Pantry is in need of canned foods, uh, meats, and vegetables, so please consider picking up a few on your next trip to the... Uh, to the grocery store. Are there any other announcements? Not hearing any. Call to worship this morning is Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame. Those who boast in idols, worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and rejoices, and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, O Lord, are the Most High over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light is shed upon the righteous, and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. And this psalm just goes to show that God is in control, not nature. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you all here and listening to us on the radio. Our first hymn will be Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. We will sing all verses, and that is number 90 in your hymnal.
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to gather in your house and for all the many blessings you provide to each of us. Please be with all who need your help, especially those involved in the natural disasters and the general turmoil around the world. And please provide means for all obstacles to be overcome and bring us all closer to you. Heavenly Father, create within us a clean heart and teach us to look towards Jesus as the example that we need in our lives. For he showed us how to love rather than hate, how to forgive rather than hold grudges, and how to serve. Lead us by opening our hearts and minds to listen to your word and your message, and give us the strength and courage to pass your word on to others. And now, would everyone please repeat with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Do we have a moment of sharing today? Uh, Main Street School is now in their new place at Community Heights. Main Street School is now in the new place at Community Heights Church over at uh, Wardell. That is a good thing. Moving on, we will sing the next hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. We'll sing all verses. And that is number 630 in your hymnal.
Please lift these names up in your prayers at home. We have the family of Dale McLaughlin, family of Trudell Allisey, family of Jim Cruiser, Amanda Keene, Art Novak, Austin Carter, Beth Goforth, Brady Hess, Brenda Lawson, Brenda Williams, Brian, BRK, Claude Branch, Colton Collins, Connie Peary, Chris, Cindy, and Isaiah, Dave, David Sims, Donna Looney, Donna Marie, Donna Whittington, Dominic Mackey, Dwayne Keene, Elaine Butler, Ellis Kahn, the Global Pandemic Patients, James Lane, Jamie Stanley, Irene and Jeffrey Mills, James Church, Janet Stanley, Jennifer Newberry, Karen Murphy, Kelly McKean, Kevin Dalton, Linda McLaughlin, Larry Puckett, Madison Hartner, Main Street School, Margaret Dye, Mark Daly, Matt and Anna Quesenberry, Moselle Cordell, Pam Helbert, Pat Krantz, Patty Pruitt, Rod Moore, Ron and Ann Carpenter, Sarah Yates, Sadie Mackey, Sadie Shortridge, Scarlett Meadows, Tammy Wilson, Tazewell and Buchanan County flood victims, Tazewell County Public Schools, Terry Blacken, Tim Scott, Tom Short, Tony Matney, Ukraine, an unspoken request, Wanda Lawson, Woody Church, Zach Carter, and Zane Settle. And now Reverend Melissa Snyder will lead us in our morning prayer. Let us bow our heads before God. Heavenly Father, we come to you with our hearts and our minds open to the receiving of your holy word today. We pray that it uplifts us and renews us and reminds us of our calling as to who we are as a child of God. As we are here this morning, Heavenly Father, we come and we sing our praises for what you have done, for what we know you will continue to do. As we wonder at how it is the first Sunday of August already and how the year is half over, we wonder where this year has gone. And we pray, dear God, that as our, as our lives have been filled with such divine blessings and mercies so far this year, we pray that you continue to divinely bless us as you see fit and that we may use the blessings you have given to us to help lift up others in your holy name. We pray to you this day and every day, dear Heavenly Father, that we would be your ambassadors in this world, that we would not just put on displays of faithfulness and piety when people can see us, but rather we would be faithful and pious each and every day when we are alone, when we are out in public. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that as we do our best to live like Jesus Christ in this world, that we would inspire others to also live in the name of Christ, that by our actions, others in this world would also become more kind and giving, more loving and forgiving, more graceful. And we pray, dear God, that we do our best to live out those virtues, to show your world what it means to live as a child of God. We gather this day, Heavenly Father, and we also lift before you so many cares and concerns. We know so many people in this world who are sick and ill and hurting, and we pray for you to help bring them to wholeness and completion. We know those in this world who have lost loved ones and they are reeling from the shock of their passing. And we pray for your comforting spirit to be with them, helping them as they grieve the loss of their loved one and friend. We pray for those who have been victims of flooding in southwest Virginia and over into Kentucky. And we pray that we give what we can to help those who are suffering so much from the devastating waters. And may they have comfort and hope that they too can rebuild 
and that all those in their lives and in this world are helping them to do what they can. We pray, dear God, in a world that seems to be ever chaotic, in a world that seems to be turning further and further away from you, may we let the light and love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, shine out from us like a beacon of hope. May we show the world that despite what the world says, we have faith in you and we know that you are still in control of all things. May we continue, dear God, in the words of the prophet Micah, to walk humbly with our God, to love justice and kindness, and to seek to do all that we can, dear God, to bring about your kingdom on this earth. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the 11th chapter of Luke's gospel, verses 37 to 44. When Jesus had finished speaking, a Pharisee invited him to eat with him, so he went and reclined at the table. But the Pharisee was surprised when he noticed that Jesus did not first wash before the meal. Then the Lord said to him, Now then, you Pharisee, you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are full of greed and wickedness. You foolish people, did not the one who made the outside make the inside also? Do, do, but now, as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor, and everything will be clean for you. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give to God a tenth of your mint, rue and all other parts of the garden herb, but you neglect the justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the most important seats in the synagogue and respectful greetings in the marketplaces. Woe to you, because you are like unmarked graves, which people walk over without knowing. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. In the 1987 romantic comedy, Mannequin, it tells the story of Jonathan Switcher, an inspiring artist who works a variety of jobs while trying to make it in the art world. He works and does balloon animals for kids' birthday parties, which takes too long because he's an artist. He works at a pizza place, which takes too long because he carefully places the pepperoni and all the other toppings so it's beautiful. He works as a topiary, which again, takes too long. And he even works at putting mannequins together for display, which one day his boss comes to him and asks him how many mannequins he had made throughout the course of the week and Jonathan's like well I'm getting ready to finish my first one now and his boss is very angry because you should be doing one about every 30 minutes in all of these jobs Jonathan is fired for taking too long to complete his tasks so one day he is driving home and his motorcycle dies and so he has to push his bike home in the rain and he passes this big well-known department store in Philadelphia and there in the window is the mannequin that he made. He stares out the window and he tells this mannequin that she is the most beautiful thing he has ever created. The next day, he goes back to the department store to see his mannequin. Throughout the course of events, he accidentally saves the life of the owner of the store, and she gives him a job and appreciation. So Jonathan begins to make all of these elaborate window displays in an effort to bring more customers into the store, because at this point, the profits of the store are abysmal. So Jonathan employs technology to make the mannequins seem like they're moving. He creates scenarios in the windows that people passing can relate to, and in the end, it works. The profits of the store go through the roof. Now, this effort of Jonathan to make beautiful window and beautiful and unique window displays wouldn't have worked if what the store sold was junk. The people would have seen the window display. They would have thought, oh, well, that's pretty interesting and gone inside. But if they had seen it was nothing more than junk, they would have not bought anything and they would have left. 
But the store had beautiful merchandise to buy, but nobody knew it until the windows were dressed up a little, and then people were enticed to enter the store. The Pharisee that we read about in today's lectionary reading, we see he had window dressing. He put on a wonderful display of devoutness and piety, but upon closer inspection, Jesus found, and so do we, that there was really nothing worthy to the Pharisee once one looked past the window dressing. Today, our reading tells us that Jesus went to the home of a Pharisee to have dinner, which we might think is a bit strange. After all, the Pharisees at this time, they've been trying to lay charges against Jesus so they can have him executed. And now here's Jesus, a willing dinner companion to a Pharisee. And then the Pharisee chastises Jesus for not washing his hands, which really makes the Pharisee pretty uncouth. For one, if you invite someone to your house for dinner as a guest, they should not be yelled at by the host. And second, the the hand washing in the Jewish culture could be a bit much because you didn't just wash your hands before the meal started. You washed your hands between each course. You had to use ceremonially clean water and it would be poured over your hands from the tips of your finger down to your wrist You would then scrub them up like you were a surgeon, and then your hands would be rinsed with your fingers pointing down and the water starting at your wrist and going through your fingertips. This was done between each course. And apparently between one of the courses, Jesus did not wash his hands, which is when the Pharisee brings up Jesus' apparent lack of religious decorum. But Jesus tells the Pharisee that you can do all that you can to wash the inside of the cup, but unless the inside is clean, it doesn't matter. And this goes back to our opening sermon illustration, implying that the Pharisees can do all that they want to dress up their outward religious devotion, but unless their inward devotion matches their outward displays, it doesn't really matter. And this idea of such blatant, outward displays of piety from the Pharisees really shouldn't surprise us. Several chapters ahead in Luke's gospel, Jesus tells the parable to some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, one a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and he prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give to you a tenth of all that I get. But the tax collector, we're told, he stood at a different, at a distance. He did not even look up to heaven, but rather he beat his breast and he cried out, Dear God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God, For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The Pharisee who stood and loudly boasted of everything that he did, while at the same time putting down somebody else that he considered to be less than worthy. Further on in Luke 21, we have another well-known parable. It says, as Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two coppery coins. Truly, I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. For all the others gave their gifts out of wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had to live on. In the temple at this time, the offerings were put into these fluted pipes of sorts. The pipes were metal and they were built into the wall of the temple and you dropped your offerings in at the top of the fluted pipe, and it would drop down into a metal drum at the bottom. So when a lot of coins were thrown into the fluted top, the coins would make a lot of noise as they fell into the drum, and that noise would reverberate throughout the whole temple. The people in the temple would hear that noise, and they would turn to look and see who had given such a generous offering. And those Pharisees would adopt that that attitude of mock humbleness. Oh, you heard that? You heard all the coins that I dropped in? Oh, dear me, I'm just so embarrassed. I didn't mean for anybody else to hear that. Which, of course, they weren't embarrassed. What, they, what happened was exactly what they wanted to have happen. Lots of noise so that everyone would see what they did and look upon them with awe. 
It was a ploy. It was window dressing. Nothing more. It's the same with Jesus eating dinner the night with the Pharisee in the privacy of his own home. Who knew how many times the Pharisee washed his hands between courses? But you can bet when he had company, he followed that law to the letter. And he clearly chastised those who didn't. This Pharisee was dressing up the outward appearance of his faith. He was doing nothing more than trying to look outwardly pious and devout. And so we ask ourselves today, do we do the same thing? Do we put on exaggerated outward appearances of our faith? I mean, it's Sunday morning and we are in church. So yes, we are a people of faith. And we do good things in the name of Christ in an effort to build up the kingdom of God. But Jesus asks us to ask ourselves, do we dress up our faith more when we are in public, trying to seem more devout or pious like the Pharisees do, or so that we get more applauded for our faith? Much like the Pharisee, we can do all that we want to dress up our faith, but all the window dressing in the world won't make a lick of difference if our heart and souls aren't truly devout. The Pharisees were the religious leaders of the day. They weren't necessarily elected to that post because of their unfavoring weight faith conviction, but because they had the money, the social status, and the position and the connections to get them to that position. This isn't to say that the Pharisees weren't people of faith, but as we know from the scriptures, they were far more concerned with their outward appearance of faith than really what they should have been. And we see examples of like that in our world today. People like the Pharisees who, whatever room they walk into, they absolutely wholeheartedly believe that they're the smartest person in the room. They're the wealthiest person in the room. They don't need anything. They don't need anyone. They're far more superior than any other human being in existence. They are God's gift to humanity. They might even align themselves to be on par with God. They boast about the wonderful things they've done for humanity, not to actually help people, but so that they can then brag about everything they have done to help humanity and get pats on the back. But Jesus tells us that believing and acting that we are better then what we suppose we are really isn't how we're supposed to live. Being stuck on our own self-importance keeps us from truly helping the children of God because we aren't helping them to help them, we're helping them for the ego boost that comes with it. It keeps us from fully investing in the children of God because as we see with this Pharisee who was dining with Jesus, this Pharisee clearly thought that he was more devout than Jesus, the Son of God, he clearly thought that he was more righteous, more reverent, quite simply because of the window dressing that he put on display for all the world to see. And to be clear, Jesus isn't condemning those who have faith and do good works in the name of God. But Jesus is chastising those whose public displays of faith are done so that they themselves might be glorified and not God. In Matthew's gospel, Jesus says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets in the synagogue as the hypocrites do to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing so that your giving may be done in secret." Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to your father, who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask him. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. 
But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your fathers who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That is how our faith is to be lived, in reverent acts of love and kindness that are not flashy, that aren't done with a lot of pomp and circumstance. We don't do good things in the name of Christ for pats on the back. And so then we can be lauded with praise for how generous we are and how selflessly giving we have been. That is nothing more than window dressing like the Pharisees are prone to do. With the reading of this passage, Jesus is asking us all to look at our lives. What do we do and how do we do it? Do we do great things in the name of Christ, but also for our own glory? Do we put on a really great outward display of faith, but inwardly we don't give Jesus much of a second thought? Are we like the Pharisees who did good things, but only so their supposed rank within the world would be more elevated than those around them? Like the Pharisees, do we sometimes think we are better than other people because we sit on boards of charitable organizations? Do we do these things to build up for ourselves a higher position or because it is what Christ has asked us all to do? Being a person of faith is not about excessive displays of faith done at opportune moments so that we will be heralded for what we have done. It isn't about showy or ostentatious acts of piety that then we are praised by everyone else around us with comments made that others wish they could be like us. Being a person of faith is not about dressing up on the outside what we know to be true on the inside. We do service to God in the name of God, but in quiet reverence and humbleness to God for all that he has done for us and his creation. Jesus today asks us to recognize that our place within the kingdom of God is not determined by what committees we chair, how much better we might think we are than uh, so many other people, so therefore we are closer to the throne of God or what it is that we can do so that others will boast about us. Rather, faith is about obedience to the Lord and service to others in the name of the Lord. Faith in Jesus and God is not demonstrated through our self-proclaimed power that we possess and use through our own prestige, but through humble service to help others. We can dress up our faith all that we want to the outside world, but true faith is more than just excessive outward displays of faith. True faith comes from knowing and believing that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that through Christ and Christ alone, we have the unmerited love, grace, and forgiveness of God. And through humble acts of faith, we show that love, grace, and forgiveness to all others in this world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bow ourselves before you in humble servitude in awe of what you have done. Help us, dear God, through humbleness to act out to others as you have acted towards us, to give your love, your grace, and your forgiveness to your children of God, and to help bring about your kingdom upon this earth. In your son's name we pray, amen. Jesus calls us to humble ourselves before him, to accept him as our Lord and Savior, and to receive the love and forgiveness that can only come from God the Father. If you have heard Jesus calling out to you this day and you would like to come forward in our church, I invite you to come forward during our hymn of invitation number 750, Peace Like a River. We will sing verses 1 and 2. Please stand.
<laughs> Sorry, y'all may be seated. Um, in my not reading of the bulletin properly, I blew over the choir anthem. So we will have our choir anthem now, and then we'll move into our time of communion. All verses. It's a lovely hymn. We are coming to our time of communion, and as we just sang, yes, our God reigns, and he invites us to come to this communion table and partake of this heavenly and holy feast in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Would you please join with me in our communion hymn, number 342, Rock of Ages, and we will sing all verses. And it doesn't say, so I'm going to say we stand on verse 3.
Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he didn't dress up who he was or the message he came to bring. And the message he came to bring said that all who humble themselves before God will be received into God's presence and will be invited to partake of these holy elements. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body given for you. Take and eat of it, and do so in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Take of it, all of you, and drink of it, and as often as you do, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, is again, once again, a gracious opportunity to gather around this thy table and what the table and emblems actually represent. I come to you today, Lord, praying for the bread, symbolic of your Son and our Savior shed blood on Calvary for the remission of our sins, making it possible for all those who believe and repent, live with thee for eternity in heaven, if we so choose. Lord, I pray that you will always continue to lead us and guide us and direct us and overlook our shortcomings. We ask that, Lord, that you would help us live our lives more accordance to your will, to share the blessings that you have blessed each one of us with, with others. I ask, Lord, that you continue to lead, guide, and direct us, and above all, Lord, save us in the end. Mm -hmm. Continue my brother's prayer for the cup, Lord. We know that you made this sacrifice for us so that we might spend eternity with you if we so choose. Please bless this cup, Lord. Bless us and all we say and do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you proclaim the living Lord's death until he comes again. And let us pray over the offerings that have been given. Heavenly Father, we give to you our tithes and our offerings, not in flashy displays, but in true humbleness for what you have done and what we know you will continue to do. We pray, dear God, that you bless these offerings and the hands that gave them, and may they be used to help bring about your kingdom upon this earth. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. 